video on? Well, good morning. It's great to be back to this. <laughs> I was only gone five and a half days. What happened? You know, um, but it's good to have the people who we do have here this morning. Uh, great for the singing, of course. Um, but uh, it appears that the, the farthest that I got from the south, the deep. Um, we okay? Okay. But uh, I do want to apologize for not being here uh, the last couple of weeks. Like I said, two weeks ago, we were out of town uh, bringing our daughter uh, back to Spokane, her and her, her husband. And then last week, Kathy uh, was not feeling good. Her allergies kicked up, but it was in her chest and she wasn't coughing and everything. So I just decided to stay home with her. Didn't want to bring you know that to here. So thank you for Will for filling in with me two weeks and Alex for last week. Um, I appreciate that. But uh, this morning, I, I mean, I'm having some of my own, my own health issues. Um, as you know, I was supposed to have a pacemaker installed Wednesday, uh, but due to everything that's going on, they postponed that indefinitely. But they told me that I am top of the list uh, once they start doing surgeries. They tried to do it at Sacred Heart, and Sacred Heart said no even. So... Uh, that's still got to happen. And then uh, this week, uh, I'd mentioned it a couple of weeks ago that I'd had the pinched nerve in my neck from the bulging disc, and I've gotten twinges of pains all down my arms, and my arm broke out. And uh, I was supposed to have a doctor's appointment Thursday, but they canceled it and made it a video appointment instead. And uh, so the doctor talked to me, and he thinks it might be shingles, uh, which I disagree with, but he put me on some medication for the shingles. Uh, so I just having a lot of things coming on and I've also got a kidney stone, um, that's been kicking, uh, really hard pain. And I was in bed all day yesterday or on the couch all day yesterday, uh, with that moving. And so I do have an appointment in the morning at 1130, uh, to get that removed. Uh, it's a six millimeter. They did measure it. Um, so I've got a lot of things going on. So please remember me in your prayers. Um, but I appreciate it. Um, but there are two questions that I have been asked a couple of times uh, these last couple of weeks. Uh, one I want to talk about uh, in a few slides, but the first one I want to talk about, and it's that, is this pandemic a God thing? I've had people ask me that. Do you think this is something sent by God? And I've actually had people tell me that it is from God. You know? Um, but I don't necessarily think that's true. I mean, we, there is no way of knowing. Uh, when we look back in history, we look back through the Old Testament, we see where God did bring about um, plagues. Okay, and he brought plagues down on his own people. Um, and so this could be a God thing. I don't know. But also when we look in the scripture, we see where the devil has done this thing. Uh, read Job. Okay, he wiped out his whole family uh, just to prove a point to God. Uh, so is it a God thing? Is it a devil thing? I don't know. And it doesn't really matter. It's happening. Um, I mean, God caused it to rain for 40 days and 40 nights and flood the whole world and wiped out everybody except for one family, Noah and his family. Okay, uh, so we don't know where this is coming from. Uh, it could be by chance. We don't know. Uh, but it's how we react to this, how we act to each other um, during this time that does matter. Um, this morning, I want to talk to you about hope. And I know Alex talked about that last week, and I just want to uh, elaborate on that. Uh, we need to have hope during this time. We need to have hope in the middle of this adversity that we are all facing together. Hope in what we have as Christians, it is a great foundation for us to have no matter what. But the Bible tells us that hope is not all there is to it, is it? We also have to have faith and we also have to have love. I have talked to several people this week, and sooner or later, this word faith pops up into the conversation. 
Faith. We have to have faith. It is something that we need to have every day of our lives. And my question is, where is your faith during this time? They usually talk about how each of us is dealing with our current situation, being shut up in our homes, not being able to go to work, maybe not even having work, maybe being fired during this pandemic. Bills are piling up, tensions are rising. There are several paths in the next two weeks or so that we could take with this pandemic and how we react to those will depend on, I think, the faith that we have in God. We don't know if the spread will slow down or if it's going to increase over the next few weeks. So how is your faith doing? We are asked as a precaution to take our temperature. I've been to a couple of buildings this week and there's somebody sitting at the door. And the first thing they do is they, they stick a thermometer in your mouth to find out if you have a temperature. And if you don't, then you're allowed to come into the building. Okay, because that's the first sign with this coronavirus, coronavirus 19, is they getting a temperature. Well, if there was a way of taking a temperature of our faith, how would it be today? How is our faith going during this time of tension how do we measure up with our faith and we have talked about faith we've talked about it recently and it, and it was kind of weird or strange or, or, or I don't know how you would call it but as I went through this lesson and I was looking up the scriptures that I wanted to present they were scriptures that I had presented in the last few months as we've been going down through the parables and so I'm not regurgitating my lessons from before, but it just so happens that those scriptures that I'm bringing up are the ones that fit for today. And we looked at faith. We looked at the faith chapter. And in Hebrews 11, verse 1, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We have to have faith over everything in place today. We have to have faith every day of our lives. We must have faith in our God in heaven. Faith that he will take care of us. That he will provide for us. We have read it in Luke 12, verses 20 through, to, through 36, that he talks about worrying, about how, what we're going to eat, how we're going to clothe ourselves, and what we're going to wear. And he says, don't worry about that. He says, if I will take care of the birds of the air, if I'll take care of the grasses in the fields, how much more will I take care of you? And I know a lot of people out there today are wondering what they're going to do tomorrow, what they're going to do next week, how are they going to get by through the next month? And we need to remember, we need to have the faith in God. We don't need to worry. God will take care of us, just like he did a month ago. He will take care of us today. He will take care of us next week and however long this lasts. As long as we are on this earth, God will take care of us. And we need to have that faith that he will do that. We can take care of each other. We need to have a heavenly hope like what we read in the rest of Hebrews 11. Verse 13. Now in the preceding verses, uh, the writer here has talked about the faith of Abel and Enoch, Noah, Abraham, and his wife Sarah. And that's who he's referring to in, here in verse 13 when he says, all, have died, all of these have died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims of the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. 
Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, and he has prepared a city for them. Two weeks ago, when we were driving back out west, we were driving west on I-40, and we were about 20 miles or so east of Nashville. And as we were coming, getting closer to Nashville, I'd notice a tree that was snapped off. And there'd be a couple of trees over here that were twisted. And then I'd notice a, a shed out in the field that was destroyed. And then sooner or later, there'd be a, what looked like a new subdivision because there was no siding on the houses. But then I noticed that there was, the roofing had been sheared off and windows were broken, and trees were pushed over. And the closer we got to down, the more destruction that we saw there in Nashville from the tornadoes they've recently had. And we got up to one exit, and I looked over, and there was a lot of businesses and warehouses and things like you would expect to see, and every single building was flattened. Every single building was destroyed. A huge, massive warehouse was just a pile of rubble. And in the edge of the rubble, you could see bits and pieces of a semi-truck that was underneath the, the overhang, and that whole thing had just collapsed on them. And we, we look at that, and it's, and it's saddening to see, but I know that there were a lot of Christians that died in those tornadoes. Uh, the last I heard, there was 28 people killed, and I think it was 10 or, or 18 of those were from the Church of Christ. There were members of the church that were killed, uh, the preacher's youngest daughter was over at a friend's house playing, and that whole family was killed along with their daughter. You know? And, and those are troubling times for us. But we need to still have the faith that God has given us. We need to have faith in this heavenly home that we read here in Hebrews 11. God was not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared a city for them, Unfortunately, there will be Christians who will die during this pandemic, but Christians die every day. But we have faith, faith in that home, that heavenly city that God has prepared for us. The next thing that I want to talk about is hope. And again, Alex talked about this last week. But in my sermon on the, in the 8th uh, of this month, my last sermon here, we talked about this. And I just want to refresh your mind. These are a couple of slides I took out of that sermon. Um, and we were talking about bearing our cross and how every day we need to bear that cross and how anyone can wear a cross around their neck to symbol that they are a Christian. But the thing is, can we bear our cross like we are required to do? We need to be willing to bear that cross every day to go to heaven. And in 1 John 2, Verses 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in this world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. There you have it, brothers and sisters. This world is going to pass away. But the will, but the, the, what we have from our Father, that promise of that heavenly home, that heavenly castle, that heavenly city, is there. And we have to have the faith that no matter what, it will be there for us. The world and God do not mix. They're like oil and water. Either you have one or you have the other. You can't have both. You can't be of the world and of God. If you're in the world and you're enjoying the things of the world, then that's where you are. You need to be of God. We need to be doing the will of our Father in heaven, we have to. And these are the scriptures when I looked up hope that came up. And again, these are the ones that I'd, I presented three, week, or two, three weeks ago uh, on my last lesson. And I just thought it was fitting that all the sermons that I have been bringing up to this point 
kind of fit into what's going on right now, kind of preparing us. Uh, because when I look at a lesson to bring to you today, it's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about the love and the faith and having hope. And in Romans 12, verses 9 through 21, remember when we looked at these three weeks ago, I told you to print this scripture out and to tape it to your mirror and to read it every morning when you got up and to read it every night before you went to bed, to put it in your car, to put it in your workstation at home and to reread this and read this and read this because this is what we need to be as a Christian. When you look at what is it I need to do as a Christian, this is it. This is how we need to live our life every single day. In Romans 9, verses 9, Romans 12, verses 9 through 21, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. There's a big one that we need to, to recite today. Continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your things or your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Brothers and sisters, this is Christianity in a nutshell. This is what we've got to be doing. As we go on in verse 17... Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry... Feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Again, we need to be reading this every day. This is what we need to be molding our life to in our Christianity. This is how we should be living our life every single day. Can you do that? Can you do all of these things every day for the rest of your life? As a Christian, you need to be doing these things during this crisis, especially. We have to. This is how we as Christians must live. These are not up for discussion. These are not up for debate. These are guidelines for us as Christians. How we need to live our lives daily whether everything is going peachy keen in our life or whether we are confined to our homes, whether our neighbor is needing food or water, we need to remember these things. We need to act as a Christian is supposed to act. Then, then the last thing I want to talk about this morning is love. Now, when you look at love, there are eight different types of love, according to the ancient Greeks. And I'm not going to go through all of those, but the, there are eight different kinds of love. Love is, com is complicated, isn't it? You know, you have love for your wife or your husband, which is different than the love you might have for your dog or your kids. OK, the love of your country or, or whatever. It's, it's complicated. OK. But in 1 Corinthians 13, what we consider to be the, the love chapter. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clinging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries 
and all knowledge. And though I have all faith, there's that word again, so that I could remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Love thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass dimly, and then face to face. For I know in part, but then I shall, I know just as I also am known. And then in verse 13, And now abides faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Faith, hope, and love. The things that we've talked about this morning, the things that we as Christians have got to have. But the greatest is love. In Matthew 5, verses 43 through 48, again, this is stuff that we have been covering in the last month or two, but it's fitting for today. Verse 43, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good. And send rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Again, we need to have love in our life. We need to love our enemies. And in Mark 12, verses 28 to 31, Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceived that he, was an he had answered them well. And he answered him, Which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. That's to us. That's the kind of love we need to have. That's our first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. To love your neighbor as yourself. And when we talked about this before, neighbor is not just the person next door to you. Not the person across from you or behind you, or in my case, above me, okay? Neighbors go beyond that, okay? But we need to love our neighbor as ourself. And we just read how we need to take care of our neighbors. If our neighbor, our enemy is hungry, if they're thirsty, if they need clothing, we need to take care of that. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. 
So the thing that we need to be looking at during these times is how is our love for our neighbor? How is our love for our fellow man? Not that faith isn't important. We need to have that faith. We need to have that faith in God. We need to have that faith in our heavenly home, our heavenly city. And we need to have hope. If we don't have any hope, then how are we going to survive this pandemic? How are we going to survive it? But the greatest thing that we need to have is love. Love for each other. Love for our fellow man. And do everything we can to help them to get through this. So we can all get through this. And we are here for you. We are here to help you. To do whatever you might need. All you need to do is let us know. Let us know what we can do to help you to get through this. And we will get through it. One way or the other. As Kathy always says, it's a win-win situation. Either way. Either we survive and make it through this, or we go home. You know? We go home. But we need to have that love. We need to have the love for each other. I mean, this machine do not get along. But we need to have love above all else. If there's any way that we can help you during this hard times, please let us know. Let us be there for you. Glad to see everybody here this morning. Glad y'all could make it. Um, we hope to do this again next week. Maybe we'll get all the bugs totally worked out of it. Um, new cable to get to, hooked to the uh, camera instead of the phone. But, um, but we're glad that you were here. We're glad that you tuned in this morning. And again, if there's anything that we can help you, please let us know.